Hello my lovely mappers, this video is just for you, no crap, just for the people who watch my videos. Today I'm going to tell you a bit about philosophy. What is a world? What is the void? And maybe not so philosophical, what is a leak? As a bonus I will show you a nice and easy way of making vent ducts without going insane. That's gonna be an interesting one, so let's jump right into it. Here I've prepared a map for this video. It's a simple donut shaped room, because it has a hole in the middle. So technically it's a donut. Ignore the vents, we save it for later. Now a bit of history. Hammer Editor is made for Source, of course. And the Source's map technology can be traced back to Quake days. Back in the days nobody was thinking about open worlds with big open spaces. Levels were just some rooms, corridors and that's it. Guess what, it's still the same in Source. Technically, every map is just either a big room or collection of small interconnected rooms. The problem the compiler faces is to decide which parts of the map are inside and which are outside of the playable area. From my experiments I've noticed the compiler does that by searching for entities. For example, I needed to place the info player start entity inside this donut room, thus compiler knew where the inside is. Then it's a bit like Payne's bucket fill. It will go through each hole, doorway, passage, etc. And at the end we are left with two distinct regions. An inside where the playable area is and an outside, that's where the void resides. But wait, through each hole? Yes, even a one unit hole is enough to cause a leak. Just like a one pixel gap is enough for the bucket tool to fill the entire canvas. Such scenario is called a leak. That's when the world leaks into the void, or to put it more dramatically, the void is leaking into your world. Scary. But not always the hole is necessary to cause a leak. Sometimes a misplaced entity can cause it. As I said, the compiler looks for the entities, but when it finds one in the void, it's like using the bucket tool twice. On both the inside and the outside. The cause is different, but the result is the same. There's no distinction between the world and the void. Leak can be also caused by seeing the map with a non-world brush. For example, if you turn your skybox, which usually is the ceiling element, into a funk detail or any other entity type, you'll get a leak, because only world brushes, that is brushes not tied to any entity, can seal the map. Same goes for the displacement, you cannot use them to seal your map. A frequent mistake that happens to hammer beginners is not sealing the floor made out of displacements. You need to put an extra ward brush underneath, give it a no draw texture and you're good to go. Leaks are not always easy to spot, especially when your skybox is aligned with the smallest possible grid size and suddenly you have a one unit gap. I don't think I need to tell you, you should not use such techniques. Always align to as big grid as possible. But if you've got such leak and you want to fix it, how to find it? First, how to detect if the leak ever happened in your map? The simplest way is to look into the water, but not to see your reflection, as if it was a magic mirror. It's more about seeing if the water is visible at all. If your water suddenly disappeared from the map, but you still can swim in it, it means the visibility part of compilation failed. And that's probably because of a leak. Once you've identified the issue, go to map tab in the toolbar and load the point file. If you don't have a point file, that means you did not have a leak and the issue lays elsewhere. The point file should display a red path straight to your nasty leak. Follow said path and fix the leak. Done. So we know what is a world, what is the void, what is a leak and how to fix it. Now finally onto the vent ducts. Let's face it, vent ducts are fun. Crawling through them, going from one room to another without being noticed, I think it can benefit any kind of map. But how to make them? Well, let me show you my way of doing it. First case scenario, your vent is going into the wall. It's not crossing any playable area, just like in our scenario. It goes through the hole of our donut. I've added a ceiling and a floor, but it's not necessary. I did it to simulate the second floor, like it's inside of a building. One thing we can notice in the game is related to this bucket tool analogy. Since the area is sealed from the world, it's not processed, there are no portals, we cannot even stand in this room in-game. The VBSP and VVIS discarded that part of the map, and that's for the best. Even though I've textured the walls just to show you that. This allows us to freely make a vent duct. Few years ago I've made that kind of hospital style map. As you can see we also have a vent, but I was stupid and I filled all the space with no draw brushes. Because I was afraid about creating an inaccessible room with messed up portals. I didn't know how exactly the compiler processes the map. Why is it bad? Well, imagine you want to move your vent, extend it or whatever. 
you'd need to do the same with at least four other no draw brushes that fill the space between the vent and other walls. It was a nightmare. In today's example, we don't have such problem. A nice and open void and the vent duct inside. Working in such condition is a pure pleasure. The big upside of such technique is ability to make angled geometry, just like I did in this part of the vent, without a penalty of having messed up portals or vislifts, whatever you're gonna call it. Of course there's a bit of portal madness going on, but it's just inside the vent and in a very small part of it, it's insignificant. Now about the part of a duct that goes into the rooms, not complicated at all. Just make a vent duct and then turn it into a funk detail. Funk details do not affect the vislifts, thus don't create messed up portals. For comparison, here is the room with a vent not turned into a funk detail. Wow, that's messy, we don't want that. So turn the vent into a funk detail and you're done. In this example we learned a void is not always your enemy, sometimes it's your best friend. Not having to worry about the portals, having a nice open space, it's useful not only for vents but also for tunnels, something like an underground metro system. You can make the void whenever you want, just remember to properly seal it from a playable area. Just for fun, I will introduce a leak into our vent backroom area. Immediately we see this region is being processed by VBSP and Vivis, thus creating a playable area with a lot of messed up portals. So guys and girls, seal your backrooms. Oh, and don't place any entities there, but you should already know that by now. So, I think that's it in this video, I hope you like it. Stay safe, don't let the void take over you, use it to your advantage and let me see you in the next video. Happy mapping!